the great, the great irony is that I've already sort of given this speech because back during the summer of my own first year of law school, I was a speechwriter for a man named Eli Siegel who worked for then President Bill Clinton. And Eli passed away a number of years ago, but back then he was the CEO of AmeriCorps, the White House's new national service program. And I was hired as a speechwriter. I was 24 years old. And one of the first speeches that Eli asked me to work on the graduation speech that he delivered, yes, right here at the University of Michigan Law School. <laughs> so what's the greatest risk you'll ever take in your life? It's admitting what you want. We ride the escalator. What's the escalator? It's a social compact. We're taught it early on, right? You get good grades in high school, you'll go to a good college. You ride the escalator up. You get a good LSAT, you get a good SAT score, you go to an even better one. The escalator takes us up some more. Do well in college, good LSAT, you'll go to a good law school. We ride the escalator again. Trust me, I rode it too. And it's taken us all, every one of us, to unbelievable places. It took you right here. Enjoy the view because that escalator has served you so well. But I'm telling you, if you hear only one thing I say today, the ride on the automatic escalator is over. How do you take the greatest risk you'll ever take in your life and admit what you want? Remember what scares you. Back when I was 14 years old, my first job was scooping ice cream. I worked at the haagen in the Aventura Mall. By the time I was 17, a friend and I convinced the owner to let us be the managers of the store. And one day this woman came up to me and she snapped her fingers at me. And she said, you need to serve me, she barked. And I said, ma'am, I'll be right with you. And she said, now. And we go back and forth and eventually I tell her, you know what, ma'am, when you talk to me like that, I'm not gonna serve you. And she goes ballistic and she yells, I want to see the manager. And I said, hold on, I'll get him for you. Can I help you? <laughs> and she says, you're not the manager. And I said, yes, I am. And I'm telling you, we're still not serving you. And she screams at me, you're going to be working at this miserable ice cream store for the rest of your miserable life. And I said to her, ma'am, if I'm still working at this ice cream store for the rest of my miserable life, you're still never getting any ice cream. <laughs> Trust me, I feel the same way. And for years, I used to tell that story laughing and saying it, it never bothered me. But today, for the very first time, I need to admit, it did bother me. It terrified me. It made me see that what happened to my dad, that that was gonna be my own future. It made me feel like my life would be small or somehow limited. But I also now realize that fear, that fear, that fear that this woman brought out in me, it fueled me, it drove me. Remember what scares you. When you're jealous of something, afraid of something, enraged by something, that's your body telling you you care deep within you about whatever it is that's eating at you. So figure out what it is, embrace it, and let it be your own rocket fuel. What's the greatest risk you'll ever take? Admitting what you want. How do you admit it? Remember what you love, remember what you fear, and remember what brought you here in the first place. And when, you, when you're armed with that information, what do you do now? You jump. Life used to be an escalator. Today, it's a trapeze. It's terrifying. It's exhilarating. But when you make that leap, that leap to your authentic self, I promise you, it will be glorious. As for me, when they asked me to speak here today, I went back and I found that original speech that I worked on for my mentor, Eli Siegel, 23 years ago. To be honest, I have no memory of which lines I wrote myself or if I added anything at all. That is gone to history. But as I sat there in my office, reading through these words that my 24-year-old self may or may not have written, I found this at the very end. This is what Eli said to the Michigan Law School class of 1993, quote, I hope one of you will be up here speaking 26 years from now. Whoever that lucky one is will be just that, lucky. Eli, you were right about that. But as I look back at my own life, of all the things Eli gave me, the best thing was his support of me as a writer. He knew why I went to law school, because I was terrified to struggle as hard as my poor dad was forced to. He knew that was what I feared, but more than anything else, he knew and gave me the space to tell the stories I loved. May you all find what you love, conquer what you fear, and never forget that fire that brought you here. And a decade from now, at your own 10-year reunion, 
or 23 years from now, when you're the one speaking up here. I hope you always stay true to your authentic voice. Thank you, Eli. Thank you all. Go Blue.